We try to fix this area of life by ourselves. We try to do this by ourselves. We try to do that by ourselves. And we get tired out. We get anxious because we have to take care of ourselves and make life work by ourselves. We get depressed because it never works, the things that we're trying to do. But when we trust in God, we say, God, this is your life. Help me. I trust you. When we do that, then we can have peace in our hearts knowing that our lives are in His hands. ហើយនេះគឺមានកតយុះមួយដែលមានលោកគូជេសិនអ្នកគូអ៊ែនជីបាទលោកគូណេសិនហើយអាណាលៀបាទនៅខាងក្រោយនោះបាទដែលជាព
He wants you to be that light in your neighborhood. He wants you to be that light to someone who's living in darkness. Bible says that in in the last days the darkness will get darker but the light will shine brighter. So God's challenge to us is how can you let your light shine more? How can your heart and God's heart be connected more? I believe God is speaking to some of you right now. And is saying, daughter, son, this is what I want you to do. To let that light shine a little bit more. Maybe it's giving up this or letting go of that. Maybe it's forgiving someone who did wrong to you. But God is speaking to each one of us let your light shine brighter because in the darkness sorry go ahead because in the darkness when someone sees a light what do they do? they look at the light and they're, they're drawn towards the light. God wants to use you to draw other people to Him. How can you let your light shine a little bit more? Maybe God is speaking to some of you right now. So I think there's some people that God is speaking to right now. I think there's some people that God's going to speak to this week. And I think there's a third group that's going to say, I'm just going to take this step of faith in order to let my light shine more. I'm going to get up earlier and pray. I'm going to talk to people that I know about Jesus. Sometimes it's not about a word from God. Sometimes it's just a step of faith. And this group here, this is where we gather together and we share the fire with each other. Then we go out into the darkness and shine our light. And then we come back together and we share the fire again. God wants you, wants to use you to transform people's lives around you. And his love is not just for the people in this room here. You know, when Angie and I got married, we loved each other. We still do love each other. <laughs> I believe so, yeah. <laughs> And then when we had our kids, that love does not grow less. Yeah, so when we had our first son, that does not mean that I love Angie less. It means now I have a new person to love. Yeah. 
I don't have to give half of my love now to my son and Angie only gets 50% now. No, we, we bring people into that relationship, that family of love. And then when we had our next son and then our daughter, that love doesn't get less and less, but now we can share with more people. Same is true with what God wants to continue to do in Cambodia. It's not just for us in this room right here. So many more people God wants to bring into His family. And God wants to use you as you shine your light to them. Amen? Amen. How many people receive that? God, let me shine my light. Amen. 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 Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you so much. Yep. Well, I want to introduce myself a little bit for those of you who may not know me. My name is Jason Prosser. Jason Prosser. And I am married to Angie Prosser, who helped to lead worship this morning. Isn't she beautiful? Yeah. yeah, come on. yeah. <laughs> and my three children are here. Where's Caleb, Justice, and Emma? Stand up, please. Caleb, Justice, and Emma. Love you guys. Love you guys so much. We were, we had the privilege of being a part of New Life Fellowship for over 16 years. When we first came, the church was over in Tulsvay How many people were at Tulsvay Prepi with us? All right, awesome. Okay, wow, yeah. so good. Okay. <clears throat> now we're here in Stumminche. The church is here in Stumminche. And so we've been, we were here for 16 years. Uh, with the privilege of serving God with you guys. About two years ago, we moved back to Portland, Oregon. And we work at a Bible college there in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, and it's a real privilege for us to work there in that school. Uh, because we get to work with young people who love God and want to grow in their relationship with God. So Angie and I are the campus pastors there at the college, and we help the students uh, in many different areas of their lives. Angie also oversees the worship department at the college as well. And I am involved in teaching many of the missions courses there at the college as well. And the awesome thing is, is that we still get to stay connected to new life through the college. We've had three students who have come from Cambodia already. We've had Elise, who is the daughter of Pastor Jenny and Sophia over at Chukva. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. sorry, thank you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. And the daughter of uh, Brother Mara and Leah, Naomi, is also studying there at our Bible college. And our son Caleb, who is also 
grown up here in Cambodia is also studying there as well. So we consider him to be Cambodian. So. I, hope, I hope that's okay, Caleb. <laughs> Um, so it's a real privilege for us to stay connected here, and we know that there are, there are a few more who are going to be coming in the coming year as well. And so it's great to be able to continue to stay connected with New Life, even though we're living in America. As we were traveling here, I was thinking about how God has led our lives up until this point. And I, I don't feel old, but I'm older than I was before. <laughs> and I, I feel like these seasons of life, God does something in each one of us. And as we were traveling here, I've, I've felt like God's saying, like, we're going to be connected with, with new life. We're going to be connected with Cambodia for the rest of our lives in some way or other. We love New Life Fellowship. Yeah, we love New Life Fellowship. I want to honor Pastor Samadhi and Navi. You guys are our heroes. We appreciate you guys so much. And we're thankful for how you are leading New Life Fellowship. Thank you for trusting some of your young people uh, to us at Portland Bible College. We'll send them back to be a blessing here to New Life Fellowship. <laughs> I also want to honor all of the staff of New Life Fellowship as well. You guys are amazing. God has a special place in heaven. <laughs> He's got special blessings for you guys. And so all of you guys, I know that the past few years have been difficult going through COVID, but you guys have been faithful and I want to honor all of you guys. Yep. All right, so let's put our hands together to thank all of them. God's got great things in the future. I'm not going to talk about COVID anymore, but let's talk about the future, right? We've been through that. Let's get through all that. We're done with it. Let's go for the future. All right. God has more in store for us. Amen? Amen? Yeah, right? God has an adventure. For us. All right. Amen. Let's get to the meat of what I'm going to be speaking about today. The main, the main part. We've been talking a little bit in the services about giving and having a fruitful season and being fruitful people that multiply in our lives. So the message that I want to talk about today is giving is a matter of our heart. Our heart and our giving or our treasure are always connected. For example, if I gave one of you guys $100, that's part of my treasure. I, I want to know what you're going to do with that. You just go down to Lucky and buy some Coca-Cola for all your friends or whatever. <laughs> 
My, what we do with our treasure is connected to our heart. And when we talk about giving, when we hear about giving in the Bible, God cares about our heart even more than He cares about our money. We could give without having a good heart. But God wants our heart more than He wants our money. We could give and say, Oh, I really don't want to give. Wow. Put it in there. Oh, wow. oh, let it go. Oh, I'm thinking about all the things that I can't buy now because I can't buy now. We always argue with God. <laughs> <laughs> Is my lunch money gone? Or, or does he, he want us to be a cheerful giver? The Bible says he wants us to be cheerful when we give. But that, is, that talks about our heart, right? Let's look at a couple of verses here. Matthew 6.21 Okay. All right, maybe have everybody read this all together. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Very good. All right. Good job. Yeah. So the place where our treasure is, that's the place where our heart is. So we could do something and look at it the opposite. We could look at where you spend your money and you'll find out where your heart is. Do you just spend money on yourself? Well, that's where your heart is. Do you spend all of your money to make yourself you know, look pretty or whatever. Well, that's where your heart is. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I'll be a little bit honest, spend money on my motorcycle. Uh, <laughs> we can look at those things and find out very quickly where our heart is. Okay, but because our, our giving has to do with our heart. So what does God want to do in us when he asks us to give? God, Jesus talks a lot about money in the Bible, but he knows he talks a lot about money because it is so connected with who we are and it's connected with our heart. So what does he want to do in us through giving and sacrificial giving? He he wants to develop some things within us. He wants us to grow. He doesn't want us just to stay the same. He wants us to be a stronger Christian. He wants us to have more faith. He wants us to have more boldness. And some of these things can be developed as we give, as we sacrificially give. The first thing that God wants to develop in us is to, the understanding that our life is not our own. Look to your neighbor and say, your life is not your own. Okay. Now look to your other neighbor and say, my life is not my own. 
Rất khá mà nẹ tiết phía ta chí vật bao nhóm Mình nên chỉ cam sức bao nhóm mê So see See Everybody look at Look at me I, I don't want to do this to be Proud or anything But everybody look at me This body This life that you see is not, Does not belong to Jason Chúng lúc nẹ bông ôn mơ mà can nhóm Hãy khơi nhóm Hãy Bọn tay Chí vật môi ní that's right. My life is, does not belong to me. See, God did two things in our lives to take ownership of our lives. We doubly belong to God. The first way is because he created us. Because he created us, we belong to him. You did not create yourself. You did not wake up one day and say, okay, I'm going to have a life now. No, your life comes from God himself. Every breath you breathe, in and out, is, is God's blessing in your life. So because he created you, you belong to him. The second reason that we belong to God is because Jesus died on the cross for us to redeem us. The Bible says, You are not your own, you are bought with a price. So everyone who believes in God will receive that redemption and now we belong to God a second time. And if you've never given your life to the Lord, this is the most important thing you can do in your life. If you've never surrendered and say, Lord, have your way in my life. Forgive me of my sins and, and allow me to be born again. If you've never done that, at the end of the service, we're going to have a prayer team up here. And I want to encourage you to come up and say, God, I'm going to surrender to him. And the team will lead you and pray with you and begin that journey with Jesus. So the first principle that God wants to do in our lives is for us to understand that our lives belong to him. Okay. The second principle that God wants for us in our lives is the principle of trust. And when we give to the Lord, it is trusting in him. Let's read Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 7. I think we have it on the screen there. Bye. One. Yeah. There we go. All right. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Right. Verse 6, next verse. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Trusting God is a huge part of our Christian life. 
đại dương miền chập phu ông cứ chia bầm nai mỗi dạng sầm khăn là không đầm nai chỉ vật chỉ bỏ sạch. When we understand that our lives belong to God, we can say to God, "My life is yours, so you can take care of me." Nếu bé đại dương đăng thầy dương chỉ cam một sách bỏ bỏ ông nhưng chập đam thoai chỉ vật bầm dương hay prap ông thà bỏ ông chỉ vật bỏ côn chỉ bỏ bỏ ông số mới thai côn phong. But when we trust in God, we try to do it ourselves. We try to fix this area of life by ourselves. We try to do this by ourselves. We try to do that by ourselves. And we get tired out. We get Anxious because we have to take care of ourselves and make life work by ourselves. We get depressed because it never works. The things that we're trying to do. But when we trust in God, we say, "God, this is your life." Help me. I trust you. When we do that, then we can have peace in our hearts, knowing that our lives are in His hands. Isn't it nice to know that there's someone bigger than us out there? And it says in verse six. Can we go back to verse six there? In all your ways, submit to him, and he will do what? He will make your paths straight. And so that's what happens as we trust in him, as we walk in his ways, as we do the things that he tells us to do. He makes our path straight. Let's go to the last verse there, verse seven. It says, and this is a little bit of a way to do that. Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and shun evil. So basically, it's saying, okay, God, my life is yours. I'm going to trust you, and I will walk in your ways. And so then how does this affect us as we give? We, we, when we trust God, we can say, okay, God, I, I, I'm going to give and I'm going to trust that you're going to provide for me with all of the stuff that's left over. For example, God talks in the Bible about giving the tithe, 10%. So trusting God is saying to God, my life is yours, I know that you will provide for me with, with just the 90%, if I give you the 10%. And then above that, if we give sacrificially, we can still know that God will continue to provide. God's a good God. Amen. He will take care of you. Trust him. You know, in the Bible, when we read about the Ten Commandments, many of those commandments, I would say all of those commandments have to do with us trusting God. If we look at some of those commands, one of them, let's say, do not steal. Why would somebody steal? Because they feel like they don't have enough. 
So they try to fix it by themselves by taking from other people. But God says, trust me. And so if we trust God to provide for us, then we won't steal. God wants us to trust with provision. If we look at another example, uh, it says in, in one of the commands, it says, do not murder. Why would somebody murder? Because that, that person did wrong to me, I am angry at them, I am going to fix this problem. But God says, don't murder. He says, he says trust me. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, talking about God. He says, that God will take care of those situations. And so then when we trust God, we can forgive, let go of our anger, and not murder people. See, a, a relationship of trust is a relationship that's connected to God. It's a life that says, God, I can't do it all on my own. I need you. Help me. And God's a good God. He's the creator of everything. The book of Psalms says that he owns everything. And he's a good father. Fathers take care of their kids. So we can trust him. So the first is to realize that our lives are not our own. The second is to trust in the Lord. And so these are the things. Yep. And so these are the things that God is developing in our lives as we give. The next thing is that God wants us to have his character as well. When God created man and women, he created them in God's image. Doesn't mean that we have like a body, like, like God has a body. The Bible says he doesn't have, you know, a body or whatever. But it means that we have his character. God created you to have the love that God has for us. God has joy. He means for us to have joy like he has. God has patience. He wants for us to have patience as well. So these are some of the things that God wants to develop in our lives as we have his character. When it comes to giving, God is a generous God. God blesses people. And God means for us to be people that bless other people as well. If we look at the life of Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, God meets with Abraham. God says, I will make you a great nation. You will have so many descendants, so many children. And God says, I'm going to 
But part of that blessing, God says, I am blessing you so that you can be a blessing. The thing that God wants us to do, wants to do in our hearts is to make us like him by being a blessing to other people. We don't protect everything that we have. This is my stuff. Don't take it. I'm not going to give. It's mine. It's mine. No, God gave it to you. It wasn't yours to begin with. So let the blessing flow through you. For being selfish and not giving, that's not God's character. Now, I'm not saying don't take care of your family or don't take care of the things that you need to to care for, but don't be thinking just about yourself and storing up treasure for yourself. Be a blessing. You know, we saw all of the things that New Life has been doing with our missions department. Through your giving, you have reached all of the provinces of Cambodia. God, God has used your blessing to be a blessing to other people. People who have never had a chance to hear the good news of Jesus hear the good news of Jesus because people give. Amen. 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 Let's keep doing that. Let's keep giving and giving so that many, many more people can, can, can come into the kingdom of God. The next thing that God wants to do in us is that he wants us to be free from a slave mindset. Sometimes people are ruled by their own fear. When we give, we say no to fear. We say, no, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to be close to God. I'm going to be near Him in relationship. Because the truth is, your money is going to go away somewhere anyways. You might as well give it to God to begin with. Right. I want to tell you a story as we finish up here. I had a friend at our church in Portland who asked me for advice about something. And he has a friend, an, an older lady, who, who is having some financial difficulties in her life. Yeah. And so her her husband was in a in was was having to live in like in hospice in like a hospital care. And they didn't have a lot of money coming in every month. And this couple has been very faithful in the church for a long, long time, giving and tithing. And they wanted to know if they needed to continue to tithe on this money. And so my friend asked me what I would tell them. And it was hard for me at first because I know 
the difficulties of life. I don't want to say, yeah, just do it. Things are getting more expensive. They don't make a lot of money. It's very difficult. But on the other side, we can't just say, yeah, you have to give and without compassion for people. And so I was going kind of back and forth. How do you balance in a, have good? How do you have good balance in an answer for that, for that situation? And what I thought of, and I, th- I think this is where God wants each of us to get in our in our thinking about tithing. When I, yeah. So so what I said to them was what I believe God is saying about giving. Is that God is inviting us through giving, he is inviting us into a closer relationship with him. And I said, this is an opportunity for this couple to step into a new season of more closeness with God. That even though they might be older now, there's still an opportunity for growth in their relationship with God. And there's still an opportunity to come closer in trust in relationship with God. And in a sacrificial giving, it could result in the in the best season of their lives. You know, God never just tells us to go and we go by ourselves. When when God sent Abraham, God told him to go. He didn't just say, okay, bye-bye. And Abraham goes all by himself. Oh, it says, when he left, God met him in the promised land. When Jesus sent out the disciples, what did he say? He said, go. But he said, I'm going to be with you. He didn't just say, okay, yeah, bye-bye. We'll see you later. No, he says, go. And he says, let's go together. He's inviting us on an adventure with him. That's what giving is too. It's an opportunity to step into an adventure with Jesus. It's an opportunity to say, God, I'm going to go and I know that you're coming with me. So let's be people who take a step boldly. Let's be people who have an expectation. What is God going to do today? You know, adventures are kind of up and down all the time. If you read a book about adventures, they always have difficult times. But a life that is just the same, 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 same is boring. <laughs> God invites you into an adventure and he says, go and let's go together. So God wants to say, your life is not your own. Trust me. Have the character of God. 
And let's go on adventure with him. Amen. Alright, let's all stand up. I want to give an opportunity for people to respond to the Lord today. Maybe you say, I haven't trusted God as much as I want to. Maybe there's something in your heart that's really difficult to let go. God knows. God knows where you're at. He knows how difficult it is to give things up. But he's saying, daughter, son, trust me. Let's go on a journey together. Let's live life close together. This is his invitation for you. It has to do with our finances. It has to do with every single area of our lives. It has to do with every part of our lives. Maybe you need to trust him with forgiveness. That can be really difficult. It can be difficult to say, God, I trust you. It hurts so much, but I need to trust you. Maybe it's trust for a relationship. You don't know the right way to go. You don't know how to handle it. Trust God. Maybe it's trusting with your family members. Whatever the situation is, God is inviting you to, to say, I trust you. How many people would say, God, I want to trust you more? All right, I'm going to do a couple of things here. I want to pray for everybody all together. But after that, I want to ask the prayer team to come up as well. And if you need prayer to trust God more, come up and meet the prayer team. And if you need prayer to give your life to the Lord, to receive His forgiveness and redemption, I'm going to invite you to come up as well. Alright, let's, let's pray together. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, You are a good God. You are a good God good God. Thank you for your word for our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness for us. God, I just pray for each one of us here today. Help us to be people who trust you more who step into that close relationship with you who answers when you say go and we go in faith knowing that you are 
with us. God, I just pray for all of us. Speak to us even now. That we can trust you in that area of our lives where we need to trust you. And as a result, be closer and closer to you. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.